Welcome back. You're tuned into My Cool Inventions Network. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat there. <laughs> I'm Akos, the solutionist. Andrew Jankira, the funky jazz chef next here. This is the this is actually the segment. We try to teach something, try to install some knowledge on you guys uh, from the, some of the experience we've had. And today's sort of selling secret topic, Andrew, is about marketing and packaging, all right? Okay. Marketing and packaging. How does it relate? And, uh, you know, for example, you know, every time I walk down a store shelf, okay, you right. know, for example, I was walking down the laundry aisle and I'm thinking to myself there's so much noise on the laundry aisle in fact there's two aisles if you're in a Walmart there's actually two separate aisles for laundry stuff okay. one's kind of more stain removing spot removing one's kind of detergents right. and if you walk down the detergent aisle right okay I mean how do they get my attention what catches your eye? What, what, color, what color catches your what eye? What color catches the eye? That's a very important thing. And actually, different products <clears throat> actually have different uh, colors that attract you. In fact, in yeah. fact, I noticed in the, yeah. I'm going to talk about, continue about laundry. Laundry, the industry leader, uh, there's also, a gal's got some videos up there, what catches your eye there. Uh, so, so there's a guy building, building one of his inventions. You know, he puts a lot of effort into the invention, uh, but really what catches the eye is different colors and different packaging and how it's laid out. Um, and these guys, these packaging companies, I mean, they do a lot of effort. I don't know if you've ever seen how much effort goes into packaging the invention, because a lot of our inventors don't actually uh, spend any effort on the, on the packaging side of it. And you know, there's big companies out there, Andrew, that, that worry about color, they worry about the packaging, worry about the boxing. Yeah, well, and, if, and you go back to sort of my, my idea on, on the laundry soap, in my opinion, if you go down to laundry soap aisle, the number one color that catches your eye is the tied orange. Orange, absolutely. Yeah, the tied orange orange is I think the number one color. And if you pay attention to what goes on in the laundry aisle, many different companies try to, I mean, they don't copy it, but they try to sneak in that orange as much as they can to try to chase the, the, the category leader. Right. The other color that I've noticed that on the laundry aisle, there's two other colors that catch my attention. Green, green. is a hot color, right? right? Green and blue, and blue is a lot right. color. Yep. So orange, green, and blue are kind of the hot laundry colors. And I think, I think if you're selling a laundry soap, which we do, of course, we sell laundry shoes sheets, right. those are things that catch my eye. So I'm trying to own the color purple, right? So if you yeah. notice on my laundry sheets, I'm trying to get into the purple color. That's why all of our laundry sheets are purple. I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea, but I'm trying to own the color purple on the laundry sheet aisle. So if you're an inventor and you're a product owner and a product developer, yeah. what I want you to do is is, is I, 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 want, I, I want you to think about how my packaging relates to the customer, okay? Right. Now I'm going to tell you one that... Uh, uh, oh, I think I guess Al's got another video up here. Do you see what she sees? Of course, there's a lot of study that goes into the branding and the, and the shelf placement of a product. Right. Um, in fact, in fact, you know, they actually fix sensors on people's eyes, and they watch these people walk through uh, planograms. Now, a planogram is how a store lays out the product, right. and 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 what eye level, what color, what height, uh, what packaging, right. what right. box, what's on the end caps, what, what's, right. what's in the way you're walking around. It's the same. You know, and in, in fact, I think you have an example here. Is I think that was a shaving product that uh, their study shows it was eighty three percent more eye appealing if it was in a clamshell, yeah. right? Right. So, so when you think about different packaging, and Andrew, you know, you've got the box. What else you got? The clamshell. Yeah, and then you. What else you got? You got uh, Clip, shape. Shape. Yes. Like different if you shapes. You got a bottle, for yep. example. You want to have a shape of a bottle. When I was in the juice business, we were looking at different size of bottles and how to how to package the juice in the bottle that's more attractive to somebody. You know. And, and, and you know, you know, it's funny, you, you, I think you mentioned something that's very, very important there. The shape of the bottle. Well, Andrew was in the juice distribution business for a while, yeah. and of course, all kinds of liquids and consumables. You know, they look for different shapes. All right, because you remember a shape of a bottle. If you don't believe me. Just just think about the Coca-Cola bottle. Does the shape pop into your mind? Absolutely. Of course it does, yeah. because because the branding of that product, the marketing of the product, is not just the color, the red color and the white. The color of the shape of the bottle is also the branding initiative. Perfume. Look at perfume bottles. Oh my goodness! How much money do they spend on perfume bottle? Just the shape. In fact, I had the liquid inside is cheap. It's the bottle that's the most expensive. Oh my part goodness! Of that. I was on a project with Paris Hilton's mother. I can't remember. I, maybe out. Yeah. Like I'll remember because he was working for that company with me too. Paris Hilton's mother had a, um, a perfume line, and what I learned about that experience was when the perfume business, it's nothing but the bottle. Yeah, it is all about the bottle. Period. 
Bottle is ruling. So you just can't buy a bottle off the shelf. These guys custom make shapes and bottles. Yep. So you're supposed to, as a consumer, even recognize the product from the shape of the bottle. So you've got bottle shapes. I and mean, then, of course, Al threw up the Coca-Cola example up there. Coca-Cola is a very, very clear example of the shape of the bottle. Really doesn't. So as an inventor, I think a lot of our product owners and our product developers were so focused on the product that we don't pay any attention right. to the packaging, all right? Yeah. And yeah. packaging is really, really important. Let me tell you something. I don't claim to be an expert at packaging. I claim to be an expert at what might sell as far as a product, right? So I actually rely on packaging experts who come to me. Now, they're, now you got to be careful because there's a lot of ripoff artists in that business because it's an expensive thing to get into. And a lot of people who are, you know, they're posers. They're not really interested. Right. They don't know. For example, our building here downstairs, if you've noticed, uh, downstairs and next door, our landlord here is actually in the packaging business. Yes. If you go downstairs, he has presses knock. It's very similar to the one you were showing here in the video of. He has presses that uh, knock out boxes and knock out leaflets and knock out different packaging ideas that help the product sell. And if you don't think that's important, I think the packaging of your product is just as important as the product itself. Right. Uh, absolutely. That's really really important. So get yourself lined up with a packaging expert. I got to yeah. tell you a funny story. Remember when we were doing stains around? Yep. We were bottling. In fact, I always tell the story that we were bottling the first load at my father's house. <laughs> yeah, in the garage. <laughs> in the garage. I was there. I was the one putting my things in, siphoning yeah. it off the big bottle, putting it in the middle wall. And, you know, we had those labels, and the labels were funny because they were just like an inkjet printer label, and the thing would run, and, and you you know, stains that would get this, obviously the, the stain of the, the ink out. And it was just like that. It was, it was, a, it was a learning curve, though, for us. So what you said funny. there is we had no packaging idea at all. We were inkjet printing paper labels, yeah. sticking them on plastic bottles. And by the way, at that time, I used to buy the cheapest bottle we could find. Yeah. It was a, it was a, I never forget, an 80 by 400 lid, and it's a cylinder. It's a half liter or 500 milliliter yeah. or 16 ounce cylinder, which is one a really common bottle. I went for the cheapest one. And it's funny because I went for the cheapest one, and I've never changed. In fact, the sort of the eclecticness of the cheap, like the, the, that cylinder, yeah. has its own brand. It's like nobody uses that cylinder because who would use that cylinder? In fact, I use that cylinder, so I sort of positioned myself in the stain removing category in that cylinder, and of course, no one else uses it, so I kept it. However, that packaging, we were typical inventors, right? Yeah. yeah. Typical inventors were Starting boxing scratch, it in there, you know, boxing it in the garage, right? Paper jet, ink jetting. I didn't ever. I never went to an expert, right? No, I, I can't even remember how we made the first label. I think I went to back then. There wasn't even very good computer programs. Yeah, it was like it was some kind of Photoshop thing we did. Yeah, but then it was just simple. Yeah, really simple. And then later, I know. I remember we went to a, getting a label, and I remember we went to an art like some somebody actually knew a little bit about yes, what yes. the colors to put on the front and et cetera, et cetera. And if I remember right, Pivo, I was my son's friends. Yes, yeah. my That's son's right. friend's father had a label company and he had our artists so we went over there yeah. and we improved the stains are out label in fact the stains are out label that we have right now is 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 reminiscent of that yeah, label. still influenced it's still influenced by, by yeah. that original guy yeah. and he had professional sort of graphic artists who say who had and of course in our stain remover we started owning the color yellow why because it was banana oil so banana oil yellow black and mm -hmm. little, little hints of red and green yeah. but basically it's if you think about the stains are a bottle you think about a yellow bottle right so I want every inventor. I mean, we are, we're on that path, right? Yeah. I'll never forget. Remember that? Remember I came home one day and, of course, HSN ordered 5,000 bottles? Yeah, then we nearly fainted because we I thought, said, that's going to take, good, like, you, months. Good news. Good news. <laughs> good news. Goes, actually, it's 5,000 two-packs. It was 10,000 bottles. Yeah. And my dad, we had the barn going, too, so we, we bottled it in the barn and my dad's garage. We had a two- factory operation going. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think we put it all into my neighbor's garage because we had no more room and we packed it in the boxes in my neighbor's garage because when the truck came, the pallets, yeah, he was on, he, those guys were on some work assignment so his house was empty so I, I took over his double garage yeah. and we had like 10, 15 pallets in there and we were hand doing the pallets, hand shrink wrapping and the big transport trailer showed up. And of course, we had no way to take the pallet from the ground level. To yeah, there's the, no, the, forklift. There's no forklift. Jack, I mean, no forklift. Who's going to lift one. this stuff? In fact, we actually hand bombed. We actually hand bombed. Yeah. The, we put the pallets onto the truck. We hand bombed the boxes and rewrapped them. That's actually how we loaded that first truck. And then we got a little smarter. And by the way, uh, you know, so packaging is important, right? In fact, one of the biggest breakthroughs we had with stains are out wasn't the bottle. I came up with the idea that we would put the bottle in a box. 
Right. Because we were expensive stain remover. It was like 20 bucks for two, 10 bucks a bottle, right? And if you go to stain remover, you can buy a bottle of stain remover for two, three bucks. Or how do I stand? And we were in Target. We were in uh, uh, CVS. Yeah. How did I stand out on the shelf? I thought, you know, if I wanted to up the value of the product, I put the bottle in a box. So now I had five more sides to sell on. So yeah. I had five sides of information, and I watched people pick up our bottle, and they actually looked at the all, all the sides. Yeah. So putting the bottle in a box was a real breakthrough for our marketing, because because we were an expensive stain remover, we had to sell more, Yes. and the box gave us the vehicle to sell more. In fact, I've noticed Arm & Hammer started doing that with a little thing, so we got copied on it a little bit, but today they're getting lazy. I don't see any, any box bottles anymore. And yeah, so, so nowadays people are looking on Google and stuff. They're not gonna. They're not reading a box like one. Right, right, right. You know so what I'm saying they're gonna just Google. Oh, what's that? Oh, yeah, okay. Hundred percent right. So, yeah. so, so you know, uh, um, you know, we're getting questions on our feed too. Uh, Joe Cups answered Amp, uh, well, like Wealthy Brown's question about uh, patents and stuff. Uh, he suggested go to Barnes and Noble and do it yourself patent book. Yeah, there is. I saw that book. It's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, that's one way for you to do it, uh, Amp. And uh, don't forget about your packaging. Okay, that's very important. So that's a little insight about inventing product and how to get the packaging right to put it on the shelf of a store. Sometimes the clip strips are a, pro a solution for you. Sometimes uh, clamshells are a solution for you. Yep. Uh, sometimes you also have to take in consideration the width of the shelf. We'll talk about that on another show. But I want to remind everybody, Inventor Masterclass tomorrow. And tomorrow's topic is get funding, get money. Important. Fund your It's a very important. Super We're going to reveal important. a secret on one of our secrets on how to get our products funded. And I'm going to reveal that for absolutely free tomorrow at 1030. Make sure you register. I mean, we Don't only have it. 200 seats. We sold out the first two. We want you to register. So just register. It's free. And then we'll send you the link where to watch tomorrow. But we're going to reveal the secret. Get funding, which is really important. Register Inventor Master Guys. Share this video. Tell other inventors. Tell your friends. People who got the first Inventor Master Class were very happy with the Get Selling portion. Get funded, baby. Yeah. That's coming up tomorrow, 1030. Stick around.